My name's Ian Green and I'm the Chief Executive of Terence Higgins Trust. I'm delighted uh, to be hosting this uh, special conversation for Tackle HIV. And I'm with two good friends of mine today, um, Gareth Thomas, the uh, rugby legend um, and now HIV activist, um, and also Ranj Singh, who is a doctor and a TV personality and a good friend of Terence Higgins Trust. So delighted to have you both join me and I'm looking forward to the, the conversation. Um, uh, Terence Higgins Trust has been responsible for National HIV Testing Week for many years now and it's a one opportunity in the year when we try and make sure there's a real profile around encouraging people uh, to get tested uh, and this year it was the most successful HIV testing week ever. Um, we ran out of test kits halfway through the week. We had to go to the government to ask them to provide some more test kits, kits which is phenomenal. Um, but there are still lots of barriers for people getting tested uh, for HIV. Now, Ranj, we persuaded you to be a model um, for the HIV Testing Week yeah, campaign. Yeah, I remember that. And also to um, you know, try and raise the profile of HIV testing during the course of the week. Yeah. What, what motivated you to both be a model and also to be an advocate? <laughs> well, park the model bit for a second. <laughs> That's I, 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 I had my picture taken. <laughs> okay. um, so... Obviously, being a doctor, being a healthcare professional, my goal in life is to help people live happy and healthy lives, no matter who they are, where they're from, whatever condition they might have um, uh, or be a part of their life. So from that perspective, I was always going to be on board. Um, being from the LGBT plus community myself, um, I'm a passionate advocate of anything that affects our community. And we know that HIV and AIDS have disproportionately affected our community for a very, very long time. So these were important conversations and things for me to get involved with. But for me, that particular campaign was all about representation. Mm. So for, for a very long time, um, the conversations around HIV and AIDS have centered around a person who looks a certain way. Yeah. We don't always or very often see people of color talking about it. Um, even though we know it affects people of colour quite significantly and people of colour are less likely to come forward and get tested and therefore get treated. Um, so for me, it was all about showing people, look, there's somebody that looks like you yeah. that's talking about HIV and is talking about AIDS. It's not that alien. Yeah. It can affect absolutely anybody. It doesn't discriminate whatsoever. And if, you, if, if seeing someone like me on the back of a bus. I always say I look like a back of a bus, but that was, that was a perfect analogy. Seeing, and, it, and it's happened, family members have contacted me and friends and said, I've just seen you on the back of the you know, 176 bus. And I was like, and it's, and it's spurred a conversation. It really has. And I think that's what was powerful for me. And I was like, I, that's why I really want to get involved. And that representation is absolutely really crucial, is it? Because one of the barriers we know in, to encouraging people to get tested for HIV is I think it doesn't affect people like me. Uh, or it doesn't affect um, the community I come from. Exactly. Well, actually, that we know that uh, HIV can affect everybody. There are certain communities that are disproportionately impacted by yeah. HIV, and we need to make sure that the message is particularly targeted uh, at those communities. But HIV can affect absolutely anybody. Exactly. Any age, yeah. any age group, any background, any culture, any religion, any faith, yeah. any creed and colour. It doesn't matter. All of us can be affected by it, all of us can be impacted by it, and all of us, I think, have a responsibility to talk about it and do something about it. So when I was first tested for HIV almost 30 years ago now, um, that uh, it used to be a really scary process. I used to have to go to, I remember the, the first test I had was at Leeds General Infirmary, when the sexual health clinic, or the GU clinic it was called then, was in the basement. It yeah. wasn't a very pleasant place. Um, immediately you felt uh, that this was a scary place to be um, and you, the, the, the fear was very real. But also I had to wait four weeks for the test results to come. Testing has changed so much, hasn't it? Oh, it's so much better in so many ways. I remember I had my first test probably 11, 12 years ago, so not, not even that long. And even at the time, I was scared. The conversations around HIV at that time were very different to the ones we're having now. Thankfully, yeah. they're very different now. And the world has changed and the, the treatment and management of HIV and AIDS have changed for the better. Um, it's nothing like what it used to be. But the, problem, the difficulty is that a lot of those misconceptions and hangovers yeah. uh, and things that people remember from when I was growing up in mm -hmm. like the 80s, the stuff that people used to say, oh, 
you know, you could get HIV from a toilet seat. I remember our neighbour coming round and saying that to my parents. Um, did you know that this can happen? And looking back on that, there's, there's still a degree of that has carried on. Yeah. That, and it's driven the stigma that lots of people experience today. But thankfully, things have changed. You don't, you know, GU clinics or sexual health clinics are not in basements <laughs> anymore. <laughs> and you don't have to wait so long for a result. And actually, when it comes down to treating it and managing it, it's so much different to what it used to be. And as you know, because you've um, shown how to use these kits, you can test yourself at home yes. and get the results in 10 minutes. Yeah, so I did um, a rapid HIV test on this morning uh, uh, back in February, which was in conjunction with HIV testing week. And I've done it before and it always gets um, people's attention because a lot of people don't realise how quick and easy it is. And the other thing that people don't realise is that actually you can have HIV and have no symptoms whatsoever. You may not even realise you have it. And that's the point that we try to make as well is that it's not obvious always mm. that, that something might be going on. But the interesting thing about that, I mean, we did it, it was a 10 minute segment. It's quite straightforward, gives you a result. Um, it actually looks quite nifty when you, when you do it and people are so surprised how quick it is. Um, but what we saw and I think what Terence Higgins Trust saw that day was a 900% yeah. increase in requests yeah. for tests yeah. in one day. Yeah. And that, I get so much slack for going on telly and not being a proper doctor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am a proper doctor, yeah. but I, I do stuff on TV now and again. I get so much slack. For it. But then stuff like exactly. that exactly. makes it all worthwhile. Because it me. brings HIV testing into the living room of the nation, doesn't it? That's and, what it did. And it's encouraging people to say, actually, if Dr. Ange can take a test on, yeah. uh, on, on the telly, uh, then actually I'll, I'll order a test. That's what people did. Yeah. I mean, it goes out to about a million people, that mm. show. How often do you do like a health intervention that, uh, uh, in my day-to-day -day job that goes out to a million people straight yeah. away? And so many people got in touch and said, one, thank you for doing it. I had no idea yeah. about it. And two, I'm going to order a test yeah. because I probably should do. Yeah. And that was really well, good. Well, we're, we're very grateful to you for your, your advocacy it's and your support. the least I can do. <laughs> Gareth, I, I know you're passionate about encouraging people to get tested, but one of the, the shocking statistics I think that came from the recent research that uh, Tackle HIV has undertaken is that 49% of people um, would be reluctant to get to tested for HIV. Yeah. How did you feel about that? Um, you kind of, you feel, it, it makes me kind of feel a little bit annoyed, um, but I understand mm. why it is. Just like Graham said, there's, there's this, assumption that the only people who need to get tested for HIV is if you live under a protected characteristic, so if you're in the LGBT community, or if you're a black African man or a black African woman, and nobody else is affected yeah. by HIV. And also, I think within, within them groups, but also in wider society in general, I think it's kind of easier not to get tested if you're afraid. Mm. So it's easier to live in ignorance um, to think, well, you know, I might have put myself at risk, but if I find out that I'm living with HIV, what's the rest of my life yeah. going to be like? How am I going to continue, you know, to play sport with my mates or drink a pint with the, yeah. with, the with the lads or go out with the girls, whatever, whatever, whatever it may be. So you kind of plead ignorance and you just put the test, you put the test off. So part of me having having lived with HIV and understand the importance of, of testing now is annoyed, but also part of me can't help but remember how I used to feel when I went for a test um, and how when I had my test a couple of times it came back, it was, it was negative. My fear of walking into a sexual health clinic for fear of being seen or for fear of being judged. You know, if I walk into a dentist or I walk into a normal doctor's surgery for anything else, no one's going to judge me. But if I walked to a sexual health clinic, I felt straight away I'm going to, I'm going to be judged. Um, and that's why it's so important, people like Randy or anybody, you do things on a public plat platform that kind of empowers people a little bit to feel, okay, do you know, if someone's been brave enough to sit in front of a million people and do a test, yeah. you know, maybe I could be brave enough to go and sit in front of my nurse, in front of my doctor and do my test. Because what it, what it does, and we, we, we're passionate about this at Terence Higgins Trust, is to normalise HIV testing. And actually say that HIV testing is actually 
not be, it's not nothing to do with in terms of somebody being judged. It's actually somebody taking responsibility for their sexual health, and that's something that we should celebrate and should applaud. Yeah, I, 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 for me as well, I think when we talk, when we talk about everybody, I sometimes say to people, you know what? Just go and get tested anyway because it's great for for numbers. It's great mm. to know that you haven't got it. So statistically, mm. as as Tackle HIV as testing and stress, we know statistically where we are, who has got it and who hasn't got it. Yeah. So I feel sometimes even if people feel like, you know what, I, I don't need I don't need to be tested because I'm in a I'm in a loving relationship. It's like right, okay. And as much as I don't want to pry, but maybe that other person mm. might not feel the same. So just go and get tested. And there's a story. Um, I did something oh, a few months ago of a woman, um, a heterosexual woman in a relationship who had watched the documentary made, mm. HIV and Me, and she was sitting down and she was thinking to herself, I've been ill mm. for a while. Um, I've been to doctors, I've been tested for this, that, and nothing's come back. I wonder if this is what it is. And she went, she got tested, and she was positive, and now she's on treatment, and she's living a normal, happy, healthy life. Um, but I suppose that's the importance of raising the awareness yeah. of the importance of testing. I watched that piece on the news, and both of you were blubbing, and I was blubbing. Yeah, yeah, it. it was yeah. just it actually me, powerful. Me must me <laughs> I saw it. It was brilliant. Yeah, powerful, yeah. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. And in fact, to see an older heterosexual female person do that yeah. was really important because they're not necessarily the groups that come forward for mm -hmm. testing. I feel like people within the LGBT plus community, particularly gay men, HIV testing has almost become part of our lives. Yeah. It's kind of an accepted thing because, you know, we have been disproportionately impacted by it at some point. Um, but older people, straight or heterosexual people, people from certain ethnic minority, minority communities, women, aren't traditionally the people yeah. that come forward to get yeah. these tests done. It just goes to show that you do need to just get tested. Yeah. The, the interesting part on top of that was that her medical team hadn't even thought no, about no, it no. because even we have blinkers on yeah. sometimes and we have biases that we think, mm. you don't look like someone who yeah. might have <laughs> HIV. Yeah. And that's what we need to get rid of. Yeah. Mm. Do you know, I think that the, you've highlighted the fact that one of the barriers for people getting tested is it can't affect me. One of the other barriers is the stigma that's associated with yeah. HIV and so many people have, have said to me that uh, the reason I'm reluctant to get tested is I, I don't want to then be subject to discrimination and stigma if I have a HIV positive test result and so much has changed with, with HIV and you, you spoke earlier Ranj about how treatment has changed significantly um, yeah. over the last uh, 30 or so years but one of the things that suddenly hasn't sh uh, changed is stigma and as, a, as, a, as an ally mm. what, what do you think what more do you think needs to be done to, to tackle HIV stigma? Um, a lot of that stigma exists because of shame mm. because I think a lot of people still feel also that it's a gay disease they don't feel like it impacts their communities they're scared of the result and what the result may mean and that may be based on outdated information or views um, and I think that what we need to remind everybody now is that HIV is not the condition it used to be. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean what it used to mean at one point in time. We've all seen It's a Sin and how terrible things were. That is not the world we live in now. The world has thankfully and fortunately moved on and medical science has moved on. If you get diagnosed early and you get treat onto effective treatment and you reduce your viral levels, um, so that they're undetectable, not only can you live a normal life, a normal healthy life, normal life expectancy, just like anybody else, but you can't pass it on to your sexual partners. Mm -hmm. And many people out there still do not know that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if they knew how quick and easy it was to get diagnosed, if they knew how straightforward it is to get treated and get your viral level suppressed, and then the fact that it doesn't actually then impact your life, in any way, it doesn't change your employment, doesn't change anything. Um, I think a lot of people's attitudes to, towards it would change. Yeah. yeah, I mean that message has been so powerful for you, hasn't it? That you know the fact that you know that because of you have an undetectable viral load, it's impossible for you to yeah. transmit the virus. It's liberating. Yeah, it's, it's made a, it's made a huge difference to me, but in a in a very unselfish way. I think the best part about it is it's made a huge difference 
to the people around me. Yeah. And they are the people I rely on. You know, I don't look in the mirror and rely on me. I need my husband. Like, yeah. I, I need him to put his arm around me. I need him to feel like he's not at risk. Yeah. I need my nieces to come up to me and give me a hug. Mm -hmm. And I feel, and they feel, at the young ages that they are, they know that they are not at risk. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, as much as it's made a, a huge difference to my life, that knowledge, that I know even if I drink from the same cup as somebody else, you know, because I, I, again, when I first was diagnosed, all these things I thought was a, was a potential for me transmitting it to other people so I could be with my mates and, yeah. my, and my mates are, are they, they have the knowledge so everything is fine everything is normal like I don't I don't fight to be celebrated I fight not to be discriminated yeah. against and that means I just want to sit in the middle of equality and be treated just like everybody else and with that knowledge that I have and more importantly than everybody else has I sit happily in equality and you know that, that, that that's so important, isn't it? Just to say, actually, I just wanted to be treated equally. Um, yeah. And actually, I want to, to live my normal, good life yeah. um, and have a really good, prosperous life as somebody living with, with HIV. Yeah, because yeah. I think that's, that's what we're all, we're all doing. As much as, as much as some people might look at it and say, we're fighting to be celebrated, it's not we're fighting for, to be treated equal. Yeah. And, you know, I, don't, I don't want to have to read stats. Yeah. That understand that the percentage, the large percentage of society, or a big percentage of society, maybe thinks that I can't have a family, yeah, yeah. or a percentage of society thinks I can never become a doctor or a nurse, yeah. or I can have it, or the percentage of society thinks that I can't have a sexual relationship with my with my husband, yeah. um, because if I'm on effective treatment, then I can have a sexual exactly. relationship with my husband, mm -hmm. and to me, that's equality. Yeah. And, you know, the, in the, the survey that was carried out by Tackle HIV, that only 18% of those surveyed actually know that somebody with an undetectable viral load can't transmit the virus. So there's so much more that we all need to do to make sure that really life-changing, anti-stigma message gets out there. Yeah, but that's a game-changer, isn't mm, it? Yeah. That is an absolute game-changer. Testing has been a game-changer. Uh, Pre-exposure prophylaxis has been a game-changer. And also effective treatment and the U equals U message yeah. um, has been a massive game changer. Imagine if this was any other chronic mm. illness yeah. and someone discriminated against you because of it or yeah. behaved like yeah. that. You wouldn't. If there was any other chronic illness where you could take a pill a day, and I'm not comparing illnesses here, but if you could, that meant you could just live a normal life. Let's say, for example, God forbid it was something like cancer. If you could take a pill a day to keep it under control, your friends would not treat you any differently. Yeah. In fact... Because it's cancer, they might actually be a bit more mindful yeah, of it. Why can't we do exactly the same for somebody that's living with HIV? Yeah. Why don't we do that? We should do that. Yeah. And at the time when we can say that uh, we, can, we have all the tools available to end new HIV transmissions yes. within the next 10 years, yeah. isn't that amazing to think less than 40 years um, uh, from the date yeah. of the, the, the first case of, of HIV, that's something that's absolutely doable. Yet there's so much that we need to do to tackle stigma and discrimination. Yeah, because I, I kind of, you know, as somebody who's not medically trained, but I have learned enough knowledge around HIV for me to, for me and my family and my loved ones, um, to be able to, to live the life. I'm, 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 I'm still afraid that even in ten years' time, you know, we are still going to be living with yeah. HIV, and everyone else can maybe move on. But we're still living with the stigma and the misunderstanding that, that, that comes with it. So it's definitely a subject. Um, and and I, I feel it's a subject that we can, if we continue yeah. knocking at doors, continue demanding change, continue fighting for equality, I really believe that it's something that we can, you know, we, we can change because the facts prove that there is no need for stigma. Yes. Yeah. And having these conversations is such an important part of that. So thank you mm. both for yeah, you, your, your passion and your advocacy, thank your you. allyship, um, and also for being good friends of Tackle HIV and Terence Higgins Trust. It's uh, always good to see you.